meeting of the Fitchburg Board of Public Works for February 6th, 2023, held in the Francis Huntley Cooper Council Chambers. Attending tonight uh, in person, myself, Alder Wheeler, Dave Wilborn, Michael Granetsky via Zoom. Uh, we have City Administrator Chad Brecklin, and we have our new Director of Public Works, Tim Volker, with us here tonight. First meeting in Council. Welcome, Tim. Yeah. All right. Um, First order, or that was our call to order, public appearances for non-agenda items. We do not have any. No one is called in, Scott. Okay. Mr. Then, Chair? Yes. If I may. Uh, Go ahead. I'd like to at least, uh, I know you already introduced I'm sorry. him. Yes, please do. But I care. thought it uh, would be a good opportunity for Tim to maybe just do a brief introduction of uh, himself and share his background for not only the members here, uh, but also for any of the community members who might want to take a look at this or might be joining us now. So. Thank you, Ted. Thank excuse you. me, excuse me, Tim. I'm sorry for not. You're good. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Bolker. I was uh, born and raised in Wisconsin. Went and graduated from the University of Wisconsin Madison. My major was in biological systems engineering, which is a, a fancy word for agricultural engineering. <laughs> And uh, my emphasis was natural resource environmental engineering. Uh, when I graduated, moved to Florida. Uh, my first job was for a civil site engineering company. We did re residential land development, commercial development, uh, basically all the water, put in the infrastructure, paving, grading, drainage, water, sewer. And then in 2008, the housing collapse really put a halt in Florida on that, uh, basically throughout the, the nation. Um, so I, I left that company and worked for a n national company called Corolla Engineers. Uh, they specialize in water and wastewater treatment. So I, I worked there for about five years, and I was commuting. Uh, about an hour to that job. So uh, once the economy got better, I latched on to the city of Stewart, which is about 17,000 people uh, on the Atlantic side of Florida. Started out as the city engineer, uh, was promoted to the assistant public works director, and then eventually became their utilities and engineering director. So I have about 17 years experience, uh, licensed and registered professional engineer in Florida. Uh, I'll be applying for reciprocity uh, with the state of Wisconsin for that uh, within the next couple months to get that process moving. Uh, so with that, if you guys have any particular questions or... Have you... Have you um... Um, have you sold your your place or wherever you lived in Florida, or have you you know got permanent accommodations up here yet? Are you I, uh, in the so my closing is set for March six in Florida. Uh, so right now I'm just staying with family, but we'll look to relocate um, closer to Fitchburg, uh, looking to live within the city just so I can become familiar with it and kind of get used to the area and go from there. So. Hope everything goes well with the closing. Uh, yeah, thank you. Always, <laughs> yeah, until it's signed and executed, you, you can't take anything. <laughs> so I, I had uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, we'll put, um, you know, what particular particular about this position, you know, was that, that made you interested, you know, in moving to a colder colder climate? <laughs> so, you know, with with Stewart, it, I mentioned it, it's 17,000 people. Um, you know, and I was just the utilities uh, and engineering director, so I oversaw the, the water, sewer, and sanitation. We had our own vehicles. We picked up our own trash, uh, had our own trucks and drivers. Um, but, like, stormwater, uh, building maintenance, development really didn't fall under me. So, really, the, the public works and how Fitchburg was set up, you know, a little bit more responsibility from the, the director's standpoint. In addition, the, the city's larger and, and growing, as i come to find out. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it's also an, a new challenge. Um, not that I was complacent in my job, but, you know, working there, I worked for the city for eight years, and it, it was just comfortable, you know. You knew the processes, you knew, you basically could come and call people and, um, it came easy, so, you know, kind of stepping outside that box and something that you 
aren't familiar with, I, I think, challenges a person. And, you know, in my career, I, I think that that's, well, in anyone's career, I think that's good for, you know, to, you to go through for growth and, and development. So, you know, I'm seeing how, how this goes and, um, you know, glad to be back in Wisconsin. Well, thank you. We're glad, glad to have you and you know, a little bit about the board members. Um, Mr. Wilborn and I both came on the same time onto this board in 1993. So we were, we're approaching, we're approaching uh, 30 years on, on this, and uh, um, so I, I, I won't tell you I know what's going on, but I, I, I've enjoyed this, and, and uh, um, you know, it's, it's something of interest to me being an engineer. Alder Wheeler uh, came on last year, so this is the second year, or is it, will this be the third year? His second year, uh, he's District 4 Alder person. Michael Granetsky has been with us on the board Seven years ago, eight? Five, six, seven, somewhere around there. Okay. Well, and uh, our other member, uh, Kim Lobdell, came on, um, I think, four, three or four years ago. Uh, she's uh, clearly having some health issues, and we hope to have her back uh, shortly. But that's kind of our, give you an idea of the experience of the people on the, on the board. And we're here, um, you know, it's our, it's our function to provide oversight to you. You know, we... Our intention, we want to support you in every way we can and work with you. The same same time, you know, we have a fiduciary responsibility to oversee and, uh, you know, ask questions. So if we do ask pointed questions at some point, you know, it's not a, it's, it's never personal. Just know that, you know, that we're, we're looking, we're looking after the, um, you know, the best interest of, the, of our residents. And, uh, you know, like I say, so please never... If we ask you a question, don't take it personally. It's it's, what, it's, it's what we're expected to do in this uh, in this position. But I think you'll find we're not we're not too much like ogres. <laughs> <laughs> Someone disagree? All right. Well, thank, thank you. That opportunity, All right. Tim, as you've probably noticed in the last couple of weeks that you've been with us, we'll have no shortages of challenges for you to help <laughs> grow your skills and and uh, experiences professionally. So we are very happy to have you on board. Uh, we know you're going to do great and looking forward to, to uh, watching you uh, grow into this role and, and do very well. So thank you. I would just add, you know, this is your this is your department. You know, certainly there's a lot of structure here, but it's it's yours to shape now, Tim. You know, and we're, we're looking forward to you doing that and putting your, your stamp on it. You know, as you've probably heard, you know, for majority of the time, Fitchburg's history, we had one uh, one public works director who you've probably met, you know, Paul Woodard, who hold in very high regard you know i don't know anyone very few public works directors you know were in a position that long you know we were very fortunate and and uh so like i say it's your department to put your stamp on and, and we're looking forward to that thank you all right uh on to the agenda the next uh first item we have is uh three alpha approval of the january 9th 2023 meeting minutes do we have a motion to approve i so move we approve january 9th 2023 meetings we have a second. A second. Moved by Wilborn, second by Wheeler. Uh, any discussion, questions, changes, or modifications? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor of the approval of the January 9th Board of Public Works minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, report from the uh, report from department head. Uh, Chad, do you want to do it, or Tim? Do you have? Would you? Do you have a report you'd like to <laughs> like to do at this point? So I've been here two weeks. Um, most of my meetings have been just kind of getting brought up to speed on where projects are, uh, various roadway projects, Syene, um, also Lacey Road. Uh, we, I believe, advertised on Quest uh, last week, um, and then as, as far as staffing. We have interviews set up for the assistant public works director on Friday. Uh, there's four candidates that we'll be interviewing. Uh, this morning we interviewed for the engineering technician open position that falls under the uh, transportation engineer. And then last week we were supposed to interview a candidate for the transportation engineer, but uh, the gentleman had reached out to us the morning of the interview, letting us know he had accepted a, a different position, so we didn't get a chance to, to interview him at all. So that still remains open. Um, so a, as far as that, it's just really the first two weeks have been just getting brought up to speed and, and kind of catching up on where stuff is and uh, hopefully next month I'll be able to provide a more detailed report for you guys. 
No, that's very good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. No, um, we're not. We're not. Uh, we're not rushing you. <laughs> Please, no. We know it's a lot. You have a lot on your plate. Chad, did you have anything you wanted to? Uh, I'll just build a little bit upon what Tim had mentioned with the Lacey Road project in particular. That is still on schedule, uh, and that did go out for bid at the end of January, is my recollection. So uh, we're hoping to have. Uh, contracts, I think, in place uh, in March or April on that. So if I recall correctly, bid opening is going to be late this month or early next month. So um, it's good that that project is uh, on schedule this year since, as you know, we had to delay that last year for a, a variety of different reasons. So, And then uh, Sign Road will be uh, wrapping up the, the current phase um, here coming up in spring near Lacey and, and uh, Seminole, or Lacey and Sain and, and uh, Cheryl Drive as well, so or Cheryl Parkway. And then next year we'll be completing that road uh, from just north of Cheryl uh, Parkway all the way up to McCoy Road. So that's all I've got unless you guys have any questions. Just one, uh, I don't know if you would know, have we had a, a decent winter for them to continue you know, getting things done on Sain? I think that got, uh, uh, they wrapped up what they needed to wrap up uh, at this point in time, and then um, there was some costs uh, associated with winter mobilization that we elected to, to pass on. Um, so we, we wanted to hold off and not, not have those costs uh, come in. So. Very good. Thank you, Chad. Yep. Questions from the board? Nope. Seeing none, we'll move on then. Next, review review of utility P card purchases and checks. Does the, the board have any questions on these? Nope. I have one, uh, and Chad and Tim, I don't expect you guys to know, I, <laughs> but maybe you can get back to us next week. Um, it's uh, general ledger period 1222 check 124271. Bureau of Correction, two frames for stormwater education for 1603. Any sense what that what that is? Jim and I thought maybe we had some stormwater work for Oak Hill. Um, I, I not making any sense out of that, it, that bill. It I, appears it's for something educational on a stormwater project. Um, what particular project? I don't know, but I can get back to you guys on that it and exactly be. where where I guess the educational component for that project would be put up. Yeah, you can just email us. Sure, absolutely. All right. It could be signage related is could, what I'm thinking yeah. uh, based upon the, yeah. the uh, manufacturer there. So there obviously is a manufacturing facility within the Bureau of Corrections. Oh, okay. So that's, that's my suspicion, but okay. Tim will certainly confirm that for you guys. I don't want to potentially mislead you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, other questions, then we'll... We're going to move on to our agenda items then. Uh, the first is Resolution R0423, granting an underground electric easement in all lot 5 of Crescent Crossing, five, or 6, I'm sorry, 6 Alpha. We have a motion to approve. I move approval. Moved by Wheeler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Granetsky. Uh, this appears MG&E is, uh, with the road construction, is putting some... Uh, um, Lines underground, they need an easement through Outlot 5. Uh, we will not be charged for them performing the undergrounding services, uh, providing we give them the easement at no cost. Does that, I believe that is the case on this. Um, anything to add? Anyone have any questions on this one? It's pretty straightforward. You see where the easement is right off, uh, as you're going down Seminole Road going south, uh, the easement is on the left before you get to the corner of uh, Seminole and uh, Lacey. All right. If you no know questions, uh, we'll call the vote. All in favor of approving Resolution R0423, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Herbs? Yes. Uh, in regards to items B and C, those are going to need to be postponed until the February 20th Board of Public Works meetings. Okay. Um, the uh, developer and the city do not have all of the required items okay. checked off the list on either of those. Okay, yet. so this to February 27th? Yes, yep, so uh, when you get to the, those, both of those items, okay. if you could have a motion to postpone okay. to February 20th, that'd be great. Okay, February 20th, okay. 27th. So uh, next uh, we have 
Six Bravo Resolution R 23722, accepting subdivision improvements, phase 1B of the plot of Highfield. Uh, do we have a motion to postpone this until February 20th? I'll make a motion to postpone it until February 20th. We have a second. Second. Second by Grinetsky. All in favor of postponing, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is postponed. Next, uh, 6 Charlie, Resolution R23822, accepting subdivision improvements for Phase 1A in the Platte of Highfield Reserve, postponed. So do we have a motion to uh, postpone Resolution R23822? I move postponement okay. until Wheeler, February 20. We have a second. 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 Discussion. All in favor of postponement to February 20th, signify by saying aye. 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 Those two uh, resolutions are postponed. Next, uh, Resolution R, R0123, authorizing purchase of a valve turner. We have a motion to uh, approve Resolution R0123. So moved. Moved by Granetsky. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Uh, I'll give Wilborn a second on that. So uh, um, we hear, as we read through, we see that... Um, we're going to change our, I believe, our, our flushing processes somewhat. Um, to try to get better. I, I think just uh, better clean out of the of the mains, which will require operation of more hydrants to do this, and uh, we need an automated automated device to to do this. As I read through, uh, is this is this mounted? This is this mounted on a trailer with a a generator? Is that is that what this uh, unit is? Uh, I looked it up and it was mounted on a trailer. Okay. All right. So part of this, you know, the uh, those of you who don't know, you know, our water mains themselves, the hydrant is there. And you, you see the, uh, the hydrant, but the, the valve actually, you know, the shutoff is, I don't know, six, eight feet down. Yeah, would that be about right? And so, you know, to, to open and close that on, on top where the, the hex is, that has to be turned or wherever it is. It's quite a bit of turning, and if, uh, um, if you had to do it all day, uh, I think you you'd probably have carpal tunnel <laughs> or a strained... Uh, rotator cuff by the end of the day. Uh, we've done it in the past, but uh, again, we want to change our, our, our process, so that's why we are requesting this. Um, I see we have uh, 75000 in the budget, and I was a little concerned, um, Chad or Tim, you know, they're dying in here about the um, 7500 from the, what is it here? The insurance, uh, insurance fund, or there. Could you please? Yes. Yeah, so our our uh, insurance company for our municipal insurance, uh, Sibmic, they offer what's considered a grant program each year, uh, where they provide uh, seven thousand dollars in funding uh, for initiatives that the city or purchases of equipment that the city can uh, utilize in ways that may cover employee safety, for instance, to potentially reduce uh, or mitigate workers' comp injuries. So this is a situation, it, it always requires a, a match from the city of $7,000, obviously, in order to get that. So when you pair the existing money the city's going to be spending from the $75,000 uh, plus the, the eleven fifteen dollars from the other funds on the diesel generator, our match is covered and then we can use that $7,000 grant to cover the, the remaining uh, portion of the purchase. So we have uh, um, 7500 7, is what's in our budget, or 75000 Correct. And then we're, we have to match the 7000 that the insurance company, so we're on um, $7,500, 7, you know, we're at, we're at uh, 82 and then the remaining 115 Yep. Um, so in effect, where, where will the grant, where will the grant go? You know, if we're, we're paying the 7,000, yeah. uh, where, where, how's that? So our match is coming out of the 75,000. 
Oh, okay. So, uh, in effect, our net cost on this particular piece of equipment will be the 83000 and change less the $7,000 grant. Thank you, Chad. Yep. I should, should have been on top of that. Question, questions from the board? Um, I'm, I'm guessing they, uh, they uh, reviewed this piece of equipment or someone went and looked at it or they've seen it seen it operated before. Yeah. All right, any other questions it, from the board? It's supposed to also put us from a two-man job down to a one-man yeah. job? And, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay. So, any other questions on that? Seeing none? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor of resolution R. R yeah, I'm, but... I'm sorry. <laughs> Will this reduce the... Um, situations we've been having with our wells you know having to repair wells because of um things eating through the seals or something or is it just basically we need it and it's pretty much efficient <laughs> i i don't think that there will be a direct correlation i mean i'm not an engineer nor am i involved in the water utility um but i I don't think that those are going to have a direct correlation. Yeah, I think the uh, the well issues that we've had with the microbes uh, are relatively specific, um, and and merely exercising these these uh, hydrants isn't going to necessarily change that. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, I also see you know this has some features for it looks like pulling some debris out or, or you know a few things like that that if we're if we're I'd like to. I'd like to think you know there's not much in not much debris in our mains, but as yeah, have you have seen when they've been flushed out there, there's stuff. There, unfortunately, or cast iron. So, all right. Any other questions, Michael? No. Okay. All in favor of resolution R zero one twenty three signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next resolution R o five twenty three two thousand twenty three. Forklift purchase. Do we have a motion to approve? Moved by Wheeler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Granetsky. So uh, um, streets, you know, they're telling us uh, um, you need a forklift to load, unload uh, equipment, move things around the shop. Um, question I'd have, and, and sorry, Chad, I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> How have we been getting along? How we've been getting along for, you know, our, our facility's been down pretty long without a, without a forklift. You know, what what is driving it now? That you know, how were we doing it before? I'm all for safety improvements. You know, I, I know material handling is is dangerous. I'm not sure. I don't know how to answer that question. Again, I I can speculate that perhaps we've been doing it in other ways that don't involve a forklift that maybe aren't the most appropriate. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have. I should have talked to Mr. Hoddle before the, before the meeting. Yeah, Mark could have certainly provided some oh. some uh, information there. And obviously, this is a budget budgeted purchase. So this has been something that that was was approved through the budget process. I don't look. I'm not sure what we're receiving. What we're receiving that has to be unloaded by a fork truck. That's what I'm not not sure about. But I I, I have. Uh, I have a lot of trust in him. But if he, he says he needs something, you know, there's there's a good reason for it. Other board members want to weigh in or questions? No. Is there any training component that needs to go along with this? Do we have a forklift driver on staff? Yeah. I'm sure that uh, Tim will talk with Mark Hodel and confirm that if there's any additional training uh, that's necessary to operate this forklift, that we'll make sure that that's provided. Good deal. Yeah, good question, Michael. I, I'm, I, I, I believe just from safety protocols, you know, we need to have uh, trained operators on this. So, um, the vendor, vendor, or somehow we will, we'll have a pro uh, process to get uh, our operators trained. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R zero five twenty three twenty twenty three forklift purchase signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, resolution R 2223, adopting the 2023 update to the 
to the ARPA slash TID closure investment plan. We have a motion to approve. I so move resolution number R-22-23. Moved by Wilborn, do we have a second? Second. Second by Wheeler. So um, this has, and the money in this has two components, uh, the American Recovery Act, uh, a certain amount of funds, I believe it was approximately um, four million, and then we had, maybe it wasn't that much, and we had two different TID closures. So we have a, we have a pool of money that uh, it has, limitations on what it can be used for and uh, you know we're, we're looking at Fitchburg infrastructure or things we uh, we would be having to make the investments in on the taxpayer funds that we're going to use this money for the mayor has um, mayor has come up with has provided his his recommendation after working with staff on what he would like to see and alders have made uh, have offered amendments to this uh, we are still roughly, you know, um, between what the mayor's budget and, and the uh, um, amendments, we still have about a million dollars difference. You know, okay. that will have to be cut out of that. Uh, next, the first public hearing on this, I believe, is Tuesday next week. Chad, does that sound right? Just looking that up here. Uh, let me take a gander here. While he's looking that up, this, this goes through all the... Um, all the committees and commissions in Pittsburgh for, for approval, um, you know, prior, prior to council and, and the public hearing. I, I thought I saw the 16th here. For real. Uh, first public hearing will be February 14th. 14th, okay. And then again on March 14th. Okay, there's two, two meetings on this and... Uh, Somewhere in there in council, we will we will uh, hammer out getting it down to the the amount of funds that are available to us. So any any questions any questions on this? You know, there's things in here. For instance, there's stormwater projects. There's um, there's software, financial software that we've wanted to purchase for quite a while. You know, it's city like any city infrastructure needs, and there are limitations on what we can you know what we can use it for there's also some additional road resurfacing okay. that was added through this this funding also okay any questions uh, please read through when you get a chance uh, if you um, I have not um, I have not proposed any any changes or any amendments to this uh, I don't know if Jim has since no. <laughs> since it came out again uh, but there um, I'll, I'll just make my public works I'll wear my public works hat and put on my citizen hat Dave and Jim to you separately via email but one of the things that I've since the beginning of this that I've tried to bring awareness to is things that would add to an ongoing budget so things such as adding new programs, adding new transportation options that may be a one-time dump this year, but then would be something that, you know, either needs to be budgeted for every single year. And I know we've had several meetings to provide feedback on that. And I guess this is just kind of the last time I'll, I'll get on that soapbox um, for implementing new things that we either can't take away later on or probably may not necessarily have the will to take away later on. Um, just think that that's a, a, a rough idea um, to try to backdoor the budgeting process at the city. Yeah, it's a good, good point. Chad, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, none of this can be used for continuing expenses. Is that correct? Well, the ARPA TID, um is finite and it has to be spent by I think 2026 if I recall what Misty has said our finance director mm -hmm. uh, the TID closure money does not have necessarily an expiration date on it it is obviously finite resource as well um, and will run out eventually uh, while it could be used for ongoing expenses the city uh, staff has recommended that uh, unless there's a really pressing need that it should not be used for anything that would create an ongoing expense and uh, therefore it should be focused heavily on one-time expenditures. Okay. 
an example, you know, where, where Michael is coming from, um, the original go around, you know, I, I, I uh, put an amendment, you know, to buy, a, um, to buy a van for the senior center transportation. Well, it would pay for the van, but then, as Michael's saying, then the city would incur expenses, you know, for a driver and gas and, and everything. And so what Michael is saying, don't, don't, uh, don't spend, uh, spend something that's going to, uh, don't spend this money to cost us more money down the road is, is his message. And I would agree with that message. The other question I've had this whole time, and, and Chad, now that you're here, maybe you can help me enlighten us one final time as well. Why did we combine the ARPA and the TED fund? It seemed like those are two very separate things and we're combining them just to show a, a bigger number and kind of maybe gain some efficiencies. Yeah, so that was really a process-related uh, call. Uh, since we had the two um, basically pools of money that were being provided between the first TID closure, I think that was TID closure number six, which is the Orchard Point uh, TID, uh, that uh, windfall coming out of that closure uh, aligned very nicely with the, the ARPA money that was coming into the city. So in order to provide that efficiency, we utilized one process to prioritize where that money would be spent. Uh, Misty uh, Dodge is working to align the spending so that it best fits with the particular pot, so to speak. Uh, obviously the ARPA and TID uh, funding, since it is coming from the federal government, does have some significant reporting requirements and other sorts of um, you know, conditions with it. Uh, so we'll look to spend those sorts of things on probably larger projects where it would minimize the amount of things we have to continue to provide reports on. And uh, the ARPA and TID, I'm sorry, the TID closure money is, has, has certainly really little uh, conditions on it. Um, it is just a one-time uh, pool of, of money that is available to the city when those districts close, assuming they've been successful like these two have. And I don't want to say that, you know, this is somewhat of a microcosm of inflationary pressures that are out there, but we budget for these things now. And is it fair to say other municipalities would be budgeting for similar things that may actually drive these estimated costs up as we actually do the work? Yeah, that's a fair, uh, fair statement. And uh, how we've approached these things is, um, you know, council is setting the priorities uh, as Alder Herbst has mentioned right now, the, the list of priorities that staff is working off, uh, including the mayor's most recent um, proposed investment of the, of the TID 6, I'm sorry, TID 4 closure uh, money is about a million dollars over what is available. So city staff has been working to prioritize that. And as we do prioritize those items, we get updated cost estimates and bring those forward either through the budget process or through a budget amendment, uh, both um, uh, when I go back to budget, either operating or the capital improvement plan uh, for further authorization and, and um, uh, approval to move ahead with those particular projects based upon scope and cost at that time. So these are all rough estimates for most of these items at this point in time. Some are in process and we have some fairly firm numbers and, and we're actually working through the projects as we speak, uh, but many of them have uh, simply have budgetary estimates and will need further refinement. Very good, and I would just advocate then when you are doing that prioritization that we, of course, put the emphasis on the public works projects that the, you know, can, can help the immediate immediacy of some of our city needs. Um, you know, obviously there's longer planning dollars, consulting dollars that, uh, while they may help us, uh, you know, immediately get something done, we may not necessarily be in a position to implement and or do anything about those, you know, recommendations uh, into the future. So always will advocate on behalf of, of public works projects being pushed to the top. Understood. Any, any other questions? I think Michael said it all. I, I, <laughs> I can keep going if you want me to. I'm going to agree with you more. Agree with you more. <laughs> all right, then we'll call the vote. Uh, all in favor of resolution R2223, adopting 2023 update to ARPA TID closure investment plan, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
Opposed? Motion carries. Next, uh, resolution R2623, accepting agreement for engineering services for Fitchroner Road reconstruction. We have a motion to approve. And so move resolution R-26-23. Moved by Wilborn, do we have a second? Second. Second by Wheeler. Uh, we read through, we, we advertised this, uh, we sent it out, we had a, a number of respondents, city staff, uh, looked at narrowed it down to four and ultimately selected, uh, selected a, a firm that is doing other work for the city uh, for this work, a uh, total of approximately, with contingency, 312,000 for the uh, uh, Fitzgerald Road reconstruction, which includes road, a uh, little bit of water main, uh, um, sanitary and some storm sewer and intersection and improvements in that. Um, Chad, is this the same firm that's, uh, I think they're the same firm, they're doing the study for the Goose Lake uh, Pond, is this the same firm? The A. I don't know, it's certainly okay. possible, they've yeah. done uh, quite a bit of work on a few different engineering okay. disciplines. All right. So any, the board have any questions on this? Uh, uh, no questions, just have fun with this one. <laughs> not easy, yeah. yeah, I know. Um, the highway, the highway itself, or the 18-151 and the, the height and everything. Um, but the road is in, the road is in poor shape. There's no question about it and it's, um, I've had a number of close calls on my, on my bicycle. I like to ride Fitzrona Road and uh, uh, find it improving a little bit. AECOM is the successful, successful bidder on this. And uh, again, this um, city staff has selected them and has, uh, has met with them and gone over the plan as you read through. Uh, the, scope is, the scope is fairly well uh, um, highlighted and uh, I, I wish them nothing but success. <laughs> I expect nothing but success, but I, I don't think it's gonna be easy. <laughs> there is a uh a related uh, project in place or in, in progress right now to, to obviously address the flooding from Goose Lake there. And um, the last update I had on that, which has been a few months admittedly, would uh, implement some measures to help the flow of Goose Lake off to the southwest. Yes. To obviously help eliminate or at least further mitigate the flooding that is periodically caused there on Fitzrona Road underneath, underneath 18151. Um, so I, uh, I think the city is trying to time the completion of the Goose Lake project uh, to be done before we go ahead and do the reconstruction here um, if, we can, we, if we can pull that off okay. so that uh, we're not dealing with uh, the flooding issue ideally uh, at all or certainly a lot less than what we've seen it. Hey, Chad, is the uh, town of Verona in on this at all? Are they consulting on the side? Are we just not involving them at all what's what's the situation there oh uh, that's a great question uh, they have been looped in on both projects both the goose lake and also the fitrona road project um, i think right now what we're struggling with is the available financial uh, capacity and policies of the town of verona and um, that's uh, presenting some challenges for the city of fitrona 50 percent I hope, I wish. <laughs> oh, my breath. Sorry. In the, the scope of work for AECOM, had two meetings with the town of Verona to determine the cost sharing allocation. So that'll be part of their scope of work. Yeah, they'll, uh, I, I would expect, you know, when they talking to people, they're going to show up with no shoes and holes in their pockets. So. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. They're good people in town. Yeah. No, we, we love them. Um, you know, the, the roundabout that was out there, I know that that was kind of jurisdictionally 50-50. I might be speaking out of turn there. Fitzroy Road, I believe, is also you know, jurisdictionally 50-50 as well. Yeah. So we want to do right by our neighbors. Are we, I, I think I read uh, the lacey Fitzrona will be a controlled intersection now. Is that correct? Or would Fitzrona still go straight through with no stop on, on Fitch Rona. 
I'm going to suspect that that hasn't been determined okay. yet. I think that'll be part of the engineering process okay. to de and design is to Makes determine sense. what would be the most uh, prudent traffic control measures there at that intersection. Makes sense. Ooh. Quick question, would that be, oh, never mind, never mind. I'm answering my own question. Right. Now this, um, you know, wh whenever it happens, uh, you know, it certainly is a uh, decent disruption. You know, a lot of people use that section of road, but there are other, there are other routes too, so. Okay, any, anything else? It's gonna be a hard one to do though, because there's so much traffic going through there anymore. Yep. It's unbelievable. Well, we're not gonna be easy. <laughs> Um, they talk about a culvert, a large culvert uh, being replaced. Is that, is that going up, up the hill, towards the hill with a concrete one? Is that, does that make sense? Did you guys read that? I didn't catch that. Okay. Well, I'll let them, I'll let them design it here. All right. okay. Any other questions? Seeing that, we'll call the vote. All in, all in favor of uh, accepting agreement for engineering services for Fitch Road and Road Reconstruction. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next resolution, R2723, approving agreement with TDS Metricom for work in the public right-of-way. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Moved. moved by Grunetsky. Do we have a second? Second. Second. So um, we had a presentation at council last time. TDS uh, Metricom is installing fiber throughout uh, the majority of the urban service territory in the in the city and a little outside, and uh, they'll be in the road right of way. And this agreement uh, um, specifies the process, or we have a process in in place, and they'll be required to to follow it. This includes um, them paying fees for expenses we we incur for locating and, and various things. Uh, this is an overall fiber that uh, the intention is to um, take the fiber directly into homes. You know, they'll be installing the road right away through lot lines in the back, but the intent, you know, is, is the fiber coming right into homes, which I, I don't think many places in Fitchburg have that right now. You know, most of them, they come to a fiber comes to a box, but then they probably still have a, a coax um, a connection into their house or something like that. So, um, any, any questions on this? So, so they're thinking about doing it directly to the homes as well? That is correct. That yeah. is correct. I'm not sure if every home, but I, I, I no. think that was their, that was their intent. Uh, yeah, my subdivision was the early part of that, so I actually have fiber. Oh, you already have it? my house. Oh, so you have smoking fast internet. Mm -hmm. right. I was watching four um, sports channels at one time. <laughs> <laughs> How... Was this proposed by this map that we see on page 85 of the packet? Was that proposed by TDS, or was that just a, a drawing that the city had put together? No, that, that's that's their uh, that's the map they presented, you know, before council the other night. You know, that's the area they they intend to uh, uh, install the fiber in. Yeah, okay. As you can see, as Jim mentioned, his neighborhood shows on there it's already installed in that in that section. Um, yeah, and there there's a little. Uh, little mouth opening that encompasses my neighborhood so always uh, so it doesn't look to like make it. sure is it coming into your neighborhood I hope I hope it's I think anywhere where there's uh, where there's good density they, you know they plan to go Michael so uh, that's not a city problem that's a uh, <laughs> TDS problem <laughs> again we went through we developed a uh, you know, ordinance ordinance to deal with this and uh, so I, I think we have things in place to allow this to move to move forward you have anything to add on Tim I know you're just getting your feet wet on it no. nothing to add okay Chad no nope, nothing okay. all right Any, anything else from the board we'll nope. call the vote then all in favor of resolution r2723 approving agreement with TDS signify by saying aye Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Next, we have resolution R0203, authorizing Dane County services for stormwater permit review and erosion control inspection. Do we have a motion to approve? I move approval. Moved by Wheeler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Grunetsky. At this time, I'd like uh, um, Dave Height to come up. Uh, he's registered to, to speak on this. 
Hi, I'm Dave, and <clears throat> I've got a couple of things I'd like the board and our new director to consider. Um, the first is the outsourcing, and the second is the criteria that the Dane County is using to approve it. So the first is, so <clears throat> watersheds are fairly complicated beasts, and they're complicated hydrologically, and also with regard to how you put together the systems to remove the pollutants in the most efficient way, both from a removal perspective and also from a dollar perspective. And so when we're outsourcing this, what we're getting back is we're getting back a small slice of this meets this criteria, and you're effectively building a system one little bit at a time. And when you do that, you get something that's highly inefficient cost-wise, uh, hydro hydrology-wise, and also pollution control-wise. Um, the other aspect of that is that, um, and you're going to have to give me the hook because I didn't actually write this down, okay. um, is the fact that from a, a personnel retention perspective, if you're constantly outsourcing what many people will consider to be the core responsibility of an environmental engineer, that's not great for motivation, job satisfaction, and retention. And we're paying for that. I mean, I know now that as I'm working with Ben and Ryan, it's not their fault, but there's a lack of continuity. There's a lack of knowledge of these watershed issues. Um, so the other issue is the uh, criteria that the county is using, which is the, they're using, as I understand it from the contract, the, uh, looking at the model stormwater ordinance that the state puts out, but the city's stormwater permit, the MS4 permit, does not say that that's the standard. The standard is a compliance with a number of specific things. One is NR151, which is the performance standards, BMPs, et cetera, but NR151 requires compliance with NR103, which is the wetland law. And the permit also requires uh, compliance with the area uh, Dane County Water Quality Plan. And one of those requirements is that <clears throat> you have to check for whether the installation of the stormwater is going to affect and degrade the ecological function of an environmental corridor. And there's a bunch of technical things about um, adding pollutants to, say, Swan Creek, which itself is impaired for phosphorus. It's part of a TMDL, but that is for the Rock River. You still have restrictions on what you can put into Swan Creek. And what I'm particularly concerned about, aside from the fact that it's polluting, is that we tend to operate in this mode where <clears throat> we uh, make a deal with the developer to build a kind of a regional facility, and at the end of that, the city inherits that back. So if we're uh, permitting substandard things with regard to how much pollution is going down the stream, when the state gets around to actually regulating some of these things, the, the city is on the hook for this. And so by doing this and using an, uh, a, a criteria that's not stringent enough, not only are we degrading water quality, but we're also potentially putting the city in a place where later on, when these TMDLs tighten up, and they will, we're going to be on the hook for a lot of dollars. So it's a policy issue that I'm more concerned with as opposed to the contract itself. And you know, that's what I want to, want to emphasize. Thank you. Um, I'll just address you know, one couple things with you, uh, David. So one, it has been our intention to have this, this, um, this inspection in, you know, done internally. But it's been a you know, manpower resource, a person power resource that we haven't. It is our intention to bring this back in house. So you know that first part, you're there. Damn, am I speaking out of turn? You know, or Jad? I think it's always it's been our intent to move this, move this in. Now, second, uh, second comment I'd have. You know, I, I don't think we're, you know, one new subdivision. Or we're designing to. I think we're designing to the current standards. Uh, you know, we're we're not we're not taking any any shortcuts. You know, we're we're designed to current standards. So I, I don't think there's um, substandard in our in our design. I guess is all I would. So if if you'd like me to comment anytime, ask me. If not, well, I'm I'm happy to sit. Well, we're follow, we're following the current standards for it. You know, um, and that's that's about my you know my length of my the depth of my knowledge on it. You know that if they tell me, say tells me we're 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 following existing existing good practice and standards, that's, that's what I would do. Um, the 
other thing, I'll just add one other thing. You know, we, I, I believe we do, Fitchburg, you know, compared to other places, you know, we, we spend a lot of time and money on our, our stormwater, you know, you know, we're a newer city, and I, I you know, my sense, I, I think we're doing a pretty good job at it compared to many other municipalities, you know, especially Madison, you know, in comparison to Madison. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, if they tighten these standards up, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how they can do that without, without uh, you know, taxing people out of their homes. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure where that would, how much tighter they get. You know, we all want cleaner water, but that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not an environmental engineer either, Dave, so keep that, keep that in mind. But uh, one thing I would ask, um, maybe Tim, maybe you could put this as an action item uh, for yourself, you know, as, as Dave mentioned, uh, you know, the criteria, you know, our we're, the county is, is must meet our state, the state requirements, you know, for a stormwater permit for a city this size. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Eight has, has mentioned, it's not, there's other standards that the county or the county has, am I correct? No, it's in our MS4 permit. Our MS4 that, that uh, aren't being met, so maybe you could, I would, I would encourage. I'd be happy to do that. If you could talk to Mr. Haith, maybe you could give Tim your your number, and I would just like you to, you know, find us kind of a, a brief on this. Your take. You know, I'm not. None of us in, on this board are environmental engineers. Absolutely. I, I think what would be helpful is if uh, I'm sorry, I didn't c capture your last name, Mr. Haith. Haith. Yep. Yeah. Like Haith Ashbury. Thank, thank you for the for the comments. I think if you. Reach out to Tim via email. You could put the specific uh, concerns that you have uh, for him via email so that he can use those as reference and uh, check in with both our existing staff and, and county staff on those and get a little bit of background. Um, as you can see, we've, we've been engaged in this contract since 2017. Uh, I suspect largely due to capacity issues. Um, that's one of the challenges that we have as a growing municipality with a lot of development that uh, staff uh, additions have just not kept pace with the workload and uh, it does require us to, to do some outsourcing in order to try to keep pace. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Dave. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, I would, I would actually echo that last comment there, Dave. Uh, I always appreciate knowledgeable citizens coming in and helping us um, you know, provide input into the, the public works process and I agree that Obviously, the short-term things that we're doing just to keep compliance can cause larger downstream impacts. And, you know, it's it's not only this, but it's, you know, street resurfacing projects and, and all the other stuff. So uh, always good because, again, I'm not an environmental engineer by any stretch of the imagination to get um, concerns noted and on record um, for what we may be in for in a future state. Okay. Thank you. Uh, seeing the other comments, we'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R0203 authorizing Dane County services for stormwater permit review. Signify by saying aye. 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 Carries. Uh, next, uh, resolution R1223 authorizing 2023 water impact fee rate. So we have a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Granetsky. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second. So uh, our last Board of Public Works, you know, we, we saw the presentation uh, by the consultant that uh, developed the, the water impact fee for us. Uh, it was last changed or reviewed, I believe, in 2010. Um, and uh, it, it's it's back again. We had a, we had an error in advertising the public, uh, public hearing or public input on that. So that's why it is back to us and it will, the public hearing on this will also be on, we're voting on this will be on February 14th also. Is that correct, Chad? Yep, that's correct. Okay. So any any questions on the, the 2023 water impact fee rate? There's nothing changed on this from the, you know, from the previous, the values in here for the impact fee calculations. Uh, it's just the, the date of reapproving this due to, uh, showing a, a public hearing for this. And I'm just assuming that that was just a complete oversight. It's a, it's a small clerical error that, uh, that uh, 
Ah, very good. Staff, our staff you. caught. You know, fortunately, they caught for us too. So we we've elected to err on the side of caution to make sure that yeah. we've followed all of the steps appropriately. Yeah. Um, there was a situation where we posted the notice uh, in the in the paper as we were uh, required to do by statute, indicating when the public hearing would take place. Uh, however, we, due to that clerical error, the actual hearing was not on the agenda for the meeting itself. Gotcha. So, okay. Uh, we've like like said, elected to make sure that we've we've done it appropriately. So that's why it's back. Always appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you for the explanation, Chad. Yep. You bet. Any questions? No. Nope. Don't call the vote. All in favor? Resolution nope. R twelve twenty three approving twenty twenty three water impact fee rate. Signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next resolution, R3123, authorizing amendment number four with V. Biker for McCoy Interceptor Design. We have a motion to approve. I move approve it. Moved by Wheeler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Granetsky. So as you guys, uh, the board remembers or recalls, uh, we had this, uh, came forward the first time, and the, the, we only had one bid, and it was uh, significantly higher than uh, um, our engineer's estimate, and we decided to to wait on this, try to incorporate it, uh, um, do some redesign on this, and, and rebid it. And that is uh, that's been what's done in, with this. And uh, we're um, authorizing you know this amendment of Vbacher for this uh, uh, interceptor design uh, and the cost cost of this amendment was. Seem right. 25, 000. 25 Yeah, it's 25, 25, 000. Does that sound right here? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> amendment four is for fourteen thousand seven hundred, but the previous amendments with amendment four have pushed it over the the threshold of twenty five thousand, okay. which brings it to the board for approval. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I could read. I'd be and dangerous. Am I reading this correctly? That it was about ninety-eight thousand originally in the CIP, and then uh, one thirty is now the new one thousand eight hundred is now the new total. Correct. Okay. Yeah, since the original agreement, there's been four amendments. Yeah. Yep. Spelled out here on the page. Uh, Page 130, uh, 132 in the packet. Any questions on this? Nope. All right. Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R3123, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Announcements. Our next Board of Public Works meeting is Monday, <coughs> February 20th. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. I so move we adjourn. Moved by Wilburn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Wheeler. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>